So this is IAT 806 lecture 11.2. We just previously talked about binary search. Um, but of course, if you're going to do binary search, that means your list, your array, needs to be in order. Um, if you're sorting uh, numbers, you know, it's just as much work as sorting, you know, names in a phone book. Uh, and that's a lot of work. Um, like I said at the start of lecture 1.1, uh, 11.1, you know, really we want to be able to uh, do some prep work in order to do uh, computing later that happens very quickly. And so what that means is that um, uh, we need algorithms to be able to deal with putting elements into order. And so that's what we're going to talk about now. So um, uh, basically, uh, you need a sorted list to do binary search. And there are numerous sorting algorithms out there. Um, some of them, it turns out, are used in practice, even though they're not necessarily the best one, just simply because um, they're easy to write and, you know, easy to put together. Where the, whereas there are some other algorithms that are really suitable for particular purposes. Um, so we're, I'm going to show a video. It's a classic. I actually saw this myself. Uh, in the previous offerings of 806, of course, uh, but when I was taking uh, my second year computer science course, uh, the video I'm about to show had just been released within the previous two or three years, uh, and it was really instructive as to how these various sorting algorithms work. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is we're going to play a great uh, little uh, in algorithm animation video called Sorting Out Sorting. Sorting is the process of rearranging items so that they are in order. Personnel records may be sorted alphabetically or by social insurance number. Hockey players may be ordered by lifetime goals scored. This film presents and compares nine different sorting techniques or algorithms. Three insertion sorts, three exchange sorts, and three selection sorts. Our first three techniques are called insertion sorts. Each one works by inserting new items into data that is already in order. The simplest insertion sort is called linear insertion. The linear insertion sort compares the first two items to see which is smaller and discovers that they are already in order. The third item is larger than the second and in its correct position relative to the other two. The fourth item is not. Thus we find the correct position and insert it into place. With each new item we look for the correct position move the intervening items out of the way and insert it. Here an item is already in the correct position. If there are n items, we make n minus 1 passes over the data, each with order n comparisons and movements. Thus linear insertion is an n squared sort. Now let's try this again with more data. In deciding where to insert the item, we examine each consecutive location, looking for the correct position with a linear search. As you can see, this is very time consuming. We can do better by using a binary search, yielding the technique known as binary insertion. Binary insertion first divides the search interval into two and discards half of it. Again, we divide the interval in two to further narrow the search. We divide again with a third probe, discover the correct position with the fourth probe, and insert the item.
We begin again, discarding half of the search interval and half of the remainder, and again half to find the position in the fourth probe. Thus the number of comparisons is usually reduced, although not always, since here linear insertion would have been faster. The binary search reduces the comparisons to order n log n, but we still need order n squared data movements. To reduce the number of movements, we use a method invented by Shell. The Shell sort, instead of considering all items at once, sort small groups of items. We start with groups spaced widely apart, in this case, every fifth item. We do a linear insertion on the first group, and on the second, and on each subsequent group. Notice that each movement takes an item five positions towards its ultimate destination instead of only one position. Next, we operate on groups spaced more closely together, in this case, every third item. Again, we perform linear insertions on these groups. The final pass is also a linear insertion sort. It goes quickly because the data is already almost sorted. But it is not obvious that the shell sort is faster than the other two methods, and if it is faster, how much faster? So let us run some experiments and see. Consider the three techniques on n randomly selected data items, where n ranges from 10 to 500. First consider the number of times we compare two items to decide which is smaller. The number of comparisons for linear insertion grows as n squared. For binary insertion, as n log n. For the shell sort, approximately the same as n log n. How about the number of times items are moved to get them into their correct positions? In linear insertion, the number of movements grows as n squared. Binary insertion makes the identical movements. The shell sort, however, yields a significant improvement. Total computation time is a function of both comparisons and movements. We have coded the algorithms as similarly as possible in the C language on a PDP-1145 computer. Linear insertion is clearly order n squared. Binary insertion yields a slight improvement. The shell sort yields a significant improvement. Another way of visualizing this is to imagine three identical machines using these three techniques to sort identical sequences of 250 items. See if you can identify which machine is using which technique. Keep your eye on the bottom machine at the beginning.
Our next three techniques are called exchange sorts. Each one works by exchanging pairs of items until all items are in order. The simplest exchange sort is called the bubble sort, a method whose fame exceeds its virtues. We begin by scanning up the data, exchanging adjacent pairs of items where necessary to move the smallest item to the top. We scan the remaining items, performing more exchanges. Now the second smallest item is in position. Each successive pass guarantees that one more element is in its correct position. There are n minus 1 passes with order n comparisons and movements in each pass. Thus the bubble sort is an n squared sort. The data is now sorted, but the program does not discover this and continues through the remaining passes. To speed up the bubble sort, we must notice when items are already in order. One method that does this is known as the shaker sort. The shaker sort, just like the bubble sort, first moves the smallest item to the top. Now we reverse directions, start at the top and move the largest item to the bottom. We alternate forward and backward passes like a cocktail shaker. Notice that the four items about to be considered are in the correct order. The shaker sort will discover this because from here up it will swap no items. Thus they must be in the correct order and also in their correct position. The shaker sort is better than the bubble sort because it transports large as well as small items towards their ultimate destination and because it takes advantage of order in the data. But even better is the best of the exchange sorts, the quick sort invented by Hoare. The quick sort begins by choosing one item as a pivot. It will rearrange the sequence to separate all items smaller than the pivot from all those larger. We scan down from the top looking for an element larger than the pivot. And scan up from the bottom looking for one smaller than the pivot. And interchange the two items. We again look for a larger item and a smaller item and interchange them. We continue this process until the smaller items are separated from the larger items. Then move the pivot between the two sets. Notice that everything above the pivot is smaller than everything below it, thus we need consider the pivot no further, and can apply the technique recursively to the two sets. With a set of smaller items we choose a new pivot, find a larger item, and a smaller item, and interchange them. Again, a larger item, and a smaller item, and a swap. Now we move this pivot between the two sets of items into its correct position. When we have four or fewer items to sort, we use a simpler technique such as the bubble sort, not shown here. Now we begin again on the set of items larger than the original pit. Thank you. 
How much better is the quick sort than the bubble sort and the shaker sort? We again resort to experiment. The number of data movements for the shaker sort is identical to those of the bubble sort because the exact same exchanges are done, albeit in a different order. Again, let's race the three machines in a typical sequence. One will use the bubble sort, one the shaker sort, and one the quick sort. Can you tell which is which? So that you don't fall asleep, we'll now speed up the race by a factor of five. Our last three techniques are called selection sorts. Each one works by successively selecting the smallest item, then moving it into place. The simplest selection sort is called straight selection. The straight selection sort scans through the data looking for the smallest item. And moves it into the correct position. We then look through the remaining data for the next smallest item. And move it into position. Notice how this differs from an insertion sort. In an insertion sort, we find the correct position for the next item we are inserting. In a selection sort, we search through the entire sequence for the smallest remaining item. Each of the n minus 1 passes takes order n comparisons and a single data movement, so straight selection is an n squared sort. To speed up the selection sort, we organize the data into a tree and apply a technique known as tree selection. Tree selection first compares pairs of items at the bottom level, selects the smaller of each pair, and promotes it to the next level. We now compare two items that have been promoted and select the smaller of the pair. This leaves a vacancy in the tree, which we immediately fill. We compare another pair of items, promote the smaller of this pair, and fill the vacancy that results. At last we reach the top of the tree. Fill the vacancy at the level below. And the next vacancy.
and output the smallest item. We can now select the second smallest item, fill the resulting vacancies, and output it. Each successive pass outputs the smallest remaining item. Since vacancies always result in immediate promotions, Knuth has labeled this the Peter Principle sort. Because each pass examines only one branch of the tree, tree selection is an N log N sort, but it uses three times as much storage as straight selection, space for the original input data, for the body of the tree, and for the output data. To achieve the same efficiency without the extra storage, we use the heap sort invented by Williams. We organize the sequence into a tree in which the first item, the three, is at the top and the last item, the four, is at the bottom right. The first pass of the heap sort will move the largest item, the seven, to where the four now is. This will happen in two steps. The first step will rearrange the tree into a special kind of tree known as a heap in which every item is larger than all items in any subtree below it. Thus the seven will be at the top of the tree. The second step will be to move the seven to the bottom right of the tree, to the end of the sequence. We first make the right subtree into a heap by moving its largest item to the top. We make the left subtree into a heap by moving its largest item to the top. To make the entire tree into a heap, we make the top subtree into a heap and then fix up the left subtree to again make it into a heap. Since the largest item is now at the top of the tree, we can move it from there into its correct position at the end of the sequence, where we need consider it no further. Note that the remaining tree is no longer a heap, but only because of the top item. So we must begin at the top, rearranging so that the second largest item, the six, will come to the top, and so that the entire tree is again made into a heap. We now move the six into its correct position, and also remove it from the tree. Each successive pass brings the largest remaining item to the top of the tree, and then switches it into its correct position. Again, let's resort to experiment to evaluate the algorithms. Notice that straight selection by its very nature requires very few data movements, since most of the work is done in the comparisons.
And here we go again, with straight selection at the top, tree selection in the lower left, and heap sort in the lower right. If you're getting bored, let this be a lesson about n-squared sorts. To conclude, we observe all nine algorithms, each with 2,500 identical data items. So that everything will fit, we represent each item with a dot, its position by its horizontal coordinate, its value by its vertical coordinate. Thus, unsorted data appears as a cloud, sorted data as a diagonal line. Alrighty, so that's sorting out sorting. Okay, so that was sorting out sorting. Um, so, uh, uh, as you saw in the video, um, that was uh, courtesy of YouTube. Somebody uploaded that a while ago. And you may have noticed that the, the frame was shaking uh, kind of con continuously throughout that. It was shot on film, likely done with a camera pointing at a CRT, which, you know, sometimes is a little unstable. Um, there were better ways of doing that. You could get a special box that has a monitor and a camera that's rigid, rigidly mounted, but not that video. In any case, um, <clears throat> each of those um, sorting methods there um, participated or, you know, were part of the, this theme shown here on the left, uh, comparison-based sorting methods. And you see most of these uh, sorting algorithms are represented in um, in the, uh, the sorting out sorting film slash video. There's a category of sorting algorithms we didn't really talk about that aren't shown in the video. One of them is a little bit newer, the proxmap sort, uh, and uh, another sorting algorithm essentially uses the actual data itself to form an address. Um, and we'll talk about a technique similar to that later on in the, in the technical stuff throughout the term. Um, so uh, I'd like to just briefly show uh, bubble sort. Uh, you saw the demonstration of it. It's very slow, but it has the advantage of being very easy to write. So here's bubble sort uh, for, you know, just iterate through the array uh, and within that have a second iteration going from the f first iteration um, up to the, uh, the, 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 you know, from one up to the limit that is counting down. So I goes from uh, length down to zero and uh, J goes from one up to I. Uh, well, you know, I minus one. And basically what happens is you compare 
uh, j minus 1 to j, and if they're out of order, you swap them. And that's it. I incredibly simple algorithm to write. So let me just, let's just show again how it works. There's the original sorted li unsorted list. You then take a first pass to swap the first two, and then uh, you increase j, and now you're t sw swapping the second two. You increase j, and you're swapping the third two. At the end of the loop, you net then decrease i by 1, and you do the same thing over. Um, but 5 has been bubbled to the correct position. Because this is so simple, you don't notice when you have a sorted list. It'll keep doing this even though it might be sorted. So, um, you know, if you run that enough, it, you know, it eventually comes to a conclusion. But as the video clearly showed, it can be very slow to run this thing in practice. However, if you need to sort something fast and you don't have access to a sorting algorithm and the list is small, you know, for big lists, this is terrible, but if, if, if you have a, sm a small collection of, you know, of information and you just want to get it sorted quick, then, you know, you might feel the urge to write this would be perfectly reasonable, uh, you know, for 20 items or less. Um, so the next theme of sorting that I'd like to talk about is these two things, themes here. On the left, uh, we see, um, uh, you know, uh, merge sort, and the idea there is that you've got a collection of data uh, separated into uh, separate chunks, maybe, maybe, uh, and you're merging them together in order to create a, an entire sorted list. Quick sort goes in the opposite direction, takes the entire list, cuts it into pieces, and sorts each of those elements a until it gets down to, you know, a, a single element. And we'll show how that works in the next lecture segment. Merge sort is also something that um, uh, makes sense in sort of parallel storage types of environments. Let's say, uh, this is kind of an old-fashioned example, but let's say you have a bunch of sorted information and one piece is on uh, a, you know, a reel of magnetic tape. Um, merge sort is you know, the kind of thing where you'd wish to merge those things together, so that might be a suitable thing to do, but that's a special kind of circumstance. So that's it for lecture 11.2, and I hope you enjoyed the awesome electronica of sorting out sorting.